Hello, hello, welcome everybody. Hello, 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 hello. How's everybody doing today? Hopefully well. And coffee, static water, tastes like television static. All right, um, today I want to go over control net. Uh, I've been using control net for a long time, doing lots of cool stuff with it. But last night I saw some really, really cool stuff. Um, and uh people were using it uh into forum and uh making uh animations with it which looks really cool people all i mean it started with people using it uh with uh, static image and um that was really cool because we use control net with things like that in the past but the qr code model in particular it makes a really cool um really cool way of sort of segmenting your your pattern into two different things one thing we've always wanted was the ability to do masked diffusion where I say where the input image is black, I want it to do this and where it's white, I want it to do that. Or if it's a segment, I want it, uh, the red part to be this, the blue part to be sky, green part to be trees, etc. There are solutions for that. It, there are some cool ways to do that. I haven't explored it enough yet, but what I have been exploring like crazy for the last 48 hours, is um using the qr code control net to uh sort of get us halfway there i really like this um this method and i think it makes some really cool videos and uh, i was just hanging out with my friend pancakes and we were talking about ways to incorporate hybrid video because he uses hybrid video very effectively in uh different ways and yeah so basically today i'm gonna make some deform animation well actually first i'm gonna start by making um, a blender animation to drive the mask and then we're going to run that mask through to forum and see what it does to the image um basically repeat the process i've been doing for the last uh, 40 uh so you guys can get an idea of um ways you can incorporate this and and other cool stuff you can so i do want to pull up the chat on my other window here just in case there are questions and yeah, if you got questions, you want me to slow down, you want me to talk about uh, what I'm doing, please say so in the chat, and uh, I will try to pay attention. All right. Uh, do, 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 do. Hello, Joe8 Creations and Swiss Crypto Cat. How are you guys doing? Hopefully you're here for some nerdy, nerdy stuff, because that's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm not going to play music on the stream, so go ahead and put something on in the background. Uh, I know people sometimes like having control of their own music and i also don't want to get copy stricken i want this video to last on youtube so yeah put on some tunes and uh sit back and we'll uh we'll get into it and i'll sip my coffee okay uh let me here we are in blender one of the things i've been doing for a long time now with blender is making um animated textures so uh let's do that um uh, this isn't really a Blender tutorial, but uh, I'll just try to go through this really fast. So if you want to try this yourself, it's not too hard. There's a bunch of tutorials out there um, on how to make uh, the camera point at a plane to make an animated image. Um, I'll talk about it, but there are better tutorials out there. All right, so we make a plane. Shift A, add a mesh, add a plane. We have a plane, add a camera, shift A, camera. Um, our camera, we changed it to an orthographic. Oh, actually, let me move my head because I'm covering up the settings here. Yep. All right. Uh, so we change our camera type to uh, orthographic, and it's going to be like a... <laughs> I won't explain why right now. Uh, change all of the rotations to zero. Move the camera up above the, uh, the plane itself. So you want to move it up on the z-axis. Anywhere above the plane is fine because it's orthographic. And you want to set the scale to two. And what that's going to do is a uh, plane with a camera above it uh, with the orthographic scale of two is actually going to fit perfectly within the bounds of the camera. And that's what we want because we're going to make a, a texture on this plane and we want the camera to point perfectly at it. So we're going to change resolution 24 by 24 because that's what we want for our input video. And there we have our camera pointing down at a plane on a perfect square. So basically lights fill the background stuff on your rendered mode and then uh ooh, the plane the new material and make it emissive material now our plane is emitting white light one thing that's important to do if you want to get these values from exactly zero to one go into color management in the very top tab here on the right 
and change it from filmic to standard and that's going to give you see how it went to actually white not gray filmic is used for um the path tracing render engine mostly to make things look like they're in the real world but uh we're not in the real world we're in math space so we want like uh absolute values so zero to one is good for us here but yeah you want to change view tr uh yeah view transform to standard and then when you render it it'll be um the right color all right uh so we're gonna drag this up remove this change this to 3d viewport sorry a little bit of housekeeping drag this over rendered mode right here you can set up your workspace however you like with blender i just like having the note. my brain hurt less all right so now we have we've got oh sorry i should talk about what i did there i went into the shader editor so you just go into the shader editor on a pane and now we've got a uh we're, we're editing the um, texture on the uh, plane, so we have direct access. So now we're going to add a texture. Let's uh, use the stuff from default Blender. Let's use a wave texture. Um, so one thing we want to do is uh, Shift A is the button I'm hitting to add stuff, so Shift A. Uh, and you want to add a color ramp. And a color ramp will uh, let you control how the colors work um, from this to this. Uh, there are very many tutorials on how all this stuff works and uh by people much 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 smarter than me so i recommend checking those out but i'll just do a crash thing change our color ramp to constant uh we want to move our um position to like 0.5 so we're just going black for the first half and white for the other half now you see instead of having a gradient where it's like very blurry now we have a constant which is direct lines this is what works best with the qr code model on so let's uh, scale it down to one. Uh, one really easy way to uh, make a perfect loop with a wave texture in Blender is to just animate the phase offset from zero to tau, or basically pi times two, times four, times six, times eight, however far. Or no, has to be tau, I believe. Uh, I might be wrong. We'll see. Uh, so let's open up our timeline. You can just drag up from this area here to get a new, like, uh, tab thing so good timeline but i want to be able to see what's happening over so we're going to change our animation length to 140 frames so that'll give us a you know 140 frame animation so what we want to do is make this happen over the course of this so we change this to zero we go to the first frame we hit i we mouse over the thing we want to change we hit i that adds a keyframe we go to the frame after the final frame so we have our final frame is 140 we go to a frame 141 and then we change this to tau t-a-u and then you hit i again well with your mouse over the thing and what that's going to do now is make a loop that loops the phase offset from zero to tau which is pi times two and that's going to make this animation uh, perfectly loop so that's what we want because ideally we want to just extend these animations and then make long animations you see what I mean when we get there. But yeah, um, now we can change any setting on this, um, uh, on this node, and uh, it will uh, you know, always give us a perfect loop. So uh, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a mapping node. Um, so mapping node, plug that in here. And add, for the mapping source, we're going to use the um, texture coordinates. We're going to use the object. What that's going to do is it's going to center our texture in the middle of the object. You can do this with UVs as well uh, if your object is more exciting than a plane. But we're just doing a plane because we're just making a 2D text. So now I have a perfectly looping, looping, loop, loop that loops this, um, this thing. So as you can imagine, there are many ways to loop things. And there's lots of cool stuff you can do uh, in Blender. So like, you know, go nuts. Um, but let's just start with this. The smaller our scale, the bigger our sort of feature is. So here's a really cool one where it's zooming in, but what I don't want it to zoom in, I want it to zoom out. So instead of um, changing our uh, offset from zero to tau, we can actually change it from zero to negative tau. And what that's gonna do is go backwards the other direction. So we go to our frame at the end here, we go forward one frame. When this is yellow, that means that there's a, keyframe on that frame so that's where we want to change it uh, and we want to change it to negative tau negative tau negative tau which is pi times two well that would also work negative pi two same value 
All right, and then you hit I on that to uh, keyframe, and now it should zoom out to us. Now we have this circle that's glomping out. Uh, if I want to make this texture more interesting, all I have to do is add stuff to it. So I add a math node, and I put it in between the wave texture and the color ramp. Now let's add a different texture into the mix. Do a Voronoi texture with no randomness and smooth F1. This should give us a bubble-like appearance, hopefully. There we go. So by just adding two textures together and making sure one of them is perfectly looping and having them both have the same mapping, you all of a sudden have this entire, you know, world of things you can play with. And all these would make compelling uh, masked diffusion animation. So let's uh, and literally just play with the values and see. Kind of cool. It's going from like a square to a circle. To just, um, another cool thing is you can actually play with the distortion on your wave texture. And it's going to give you a really interesting pattern that perfectly loops no matter what, as long as your phase offset is going from zero to tau. Or tau times two, tau. So yeah, let's uh, just. Well, I'm actually going to remove this. We're just going to do the ring texture now. Cool. I'm actually going to go 0.5. I think I want more stuff happening. Yeah. This is pretty cool. We're like half and half black and white, so this will give us a cool like uh, indication of what's happening. So we're going to render out 140 frames here and selecting the directory. I put mine in my temp folder. We'll call this rings uh, render render animation. This should go pretty fast. Now we have 140 frame animation in that place. I'm just going to very quickly open up DaVinci Resolve and cut those together into a, cut those PNG files into a, a video to use with uh, ControlNet. Um, DaVinci Resolve is free. Uh, you get it if you don't have it. Awesome. Uh, good video editor. Uh, you, in Blender, you can also just export it as a, uh, or as a video. So you can totally skip that step if you I just like to keep the PNGs around because I end up doing fun stuff. Let's do this real quick. Rings, black and white. So we just made a quick video of our nation. So I'll pull that video up into VLC. You can see what it, or into OBS. You can see what it looks like. Video source is rings. Here you are. There we go. That's our video. It should loop perfectly. So that's, this is what we're going to use to drive the diffusion. So this, the, the, there should be a clear separation between what's happening in the black areas and what's happening in the white areas. So let's move over to Deforum now that we have this image. Uh, Deforum, you just install it with automatic 11.11 if you want to use it locally. You need like a GPU 3060, 2060, something like that or above. Uh, where are we? Deforum. Hey, there we are. Okay. Over here in Deforum. I'm going to copy the path from that video that I just made. Uh, you just right click on the file that you made and right click, copy as path or control shift C in Windows. Uh, and now uh, in the forum, I'm going to control net. We're going to change, we're going to enable um, control net model one. We're going to change it to no preprocessor and we're going to get the QR code monster uh, model. If you don't have that, you don't have it installed, it's, um, grab you a link for it. Uh, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. I'll drop it in the chat. There it is. Copy link. There you are. So that is the low, uh, that's where you download the model. Uh, if you go there, uh, you sure I want to leave YouTube. Uh, yeah, of course. Okay. Um, you go to files and versions and you want to download this file right here. Control V1 P SD 15 QR code monster dot save tensors. That file goes in your stable diffusion web UI extensions, uh, stable diffusion web UI control net, um, models folder. Um, so it goes in, um, SD, uh, extensions sd web ui control net models um it goes in that folder there um and then once you have it in that folder you just load up um automatic 11 11 and if you haven't if you install it while automatic 11 11 is running you can click this little refresh button beside the thing and it'll refresh the things that you want to select it from the menu here all right uh change the wait schedule to uh, 0 0.8 leave the rest of that stuff alone Paste the path. Oh, that's the <laughs> that's the path to the model. 
we want the path to the video. Pop that in there. So that's the path to the video we just made. Uh, balanced, all that stuff is fine. Um, Pixel Perfect is, if you have a lot of VRAM, click that. If you don't, don't. Um, it's fine. It just makes it more clean. The edge is more clean. Uh, hybrid settings. Um, this seems to be the coolest setup so far that we've sort of, me and Pancakes have figured out, mostly him. Um, hybrid settings after generation. Click generate input frames. Unclick first frame as in, in an image. I like hybrid motion optical flow. I like the flow method farm back. I like to leave this crap alone. I like to use the video depth. I don't use a comp mask for this. The comp alpha, turn it to zero because what will happen is the input image, which is black and white, will take over your animation and make it black and white. This is no good. Flow factor one, two, whatever you want. Um, that's how much the image impacts the other one. But control net's actually impacting it quite a bit too. So these things play with each other. So blah, blah, blah. Drop your prompt in here. Um, I'm using uh, just like Northern Ontario where I grew up. Uh, looks cool. Uh, I'm using 2D mode with no motion. And right now I'm playing with the strength to find out what the best uh, strength is. Um, so last ran I did, run I did was uh, 0.73. We'll try 0.75 this time. Output, uh, let's change it to 24 frames per second. Uh, and that should be fine. Hybrid video, blah, blah, blah. Prompts, keyframes. Our animation was 140 frames, so I've set my max frames to 140 and a cadence of 1. So it'll do every single frame. Uh, if you increase the cadence, you increase the smeariness of the video, but it renders a lot faster. So just a taste thing. I'm using a simple Euler A at 25 steps, tiny 5x12x512, by 12 by 12, just for streaming because they go a lot faster this way. When you get something you really like, go ahead and crank that up and just let it render and you'll get some really cool stuff. Right now, this only works with SD 1.5, so you won't be able to uh, do this on SDXL yet. But uh, you know, hopefully, the somebody will make a control code, control QR code, control net for SDXL, and then we'll be off to the races. Uh, you're all good. Let's run it. Okay, let me check. Aha! It's interrupted. Uh, when you use hybrid video, you need to change the video init path to the video you made well as the control net one i missed that one so that's in init video init uh and i also turn your image init down to zero i think that should help uh not overwrite the color let's try that again all right so remember our animation looks like uh ba -ba 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 -ba. let me pull it up our animation looks like this boop so you can see what it's doing when it's diffusing. It's actually imparting that on the diffusion itself. It's it's really cool. All this should make a pretty cool animation. Let's see if I can find some examples of the stuff we did. Yeah. Oops, I got my other video in the way. So yeah, like you can see, that's using like a grid uh, animation. Uh, where did I put that? Uh, that's using a very similar one to the one we made just now with the rings. This is so cool. That was like a 90s point and click adventure game one that I did. It's like a flashing, uh, glitchy, pixelated one. Super cool. Yeah, I tried having the prompt to find some shapes um, to see what it would do, and uh, yeah, it came out really cool. And that's what the that's what's going on in the background. That's the the control net mask to this. I like how it just subtly changes the animations. And some more grids. There's something really cool about grids in nature. That's a slow motion version of the um, uh, starfishy one, so you can see. This is without hybrid video. So this is before I was doing the hybrid video experiments. This is just pure control net. And um, it's a little flickerier than using the hybrid video with the stuff we've been doing. Oh, wow. All right, this one's almost done. Let's check it out. Pull it up on, oh, yes. You'll see. There we go. 
Well, that's pretty cool. The way the everything grows out. So as you can imagine, if you just extend the animations of the input textures indefinitely, you know, or if we could, what would be really awesome in the forum is if we could get a little checkbox to just loop our input videos so that we can just put whatever, um, you know, target frame we want as the end frame and just let it render and render and render and render. But for now, yeah, you can just double, triple, quadruple your animation length as long as it loops and, uh, just get these big, long, flowy animations that, like, they flow in a very different way than the the traditional trying to move the camera through the space uh, methods that currently the forum does. That's mesmerizing. I love that. All right, let's uh, let's try another one. Let's try a portal to another dimension. Uh, Fantasy and science fiction, book cover, 1970s, analog uh, technology, and uh, what's another cool thing? Uh, oh, let's try uh, Nanopunk, which is like a uh, little tiny, little tiny stuff. This might make something really cool. Might make something really awful. We just won't know. Bring this guy back up. Watch that cool thing happen. Okay. I'm willing to let this one go. <laughs> See what we get. Uh, no, they can be anything. Yeah, the masks can be anything. And you can use them for um, static images as well. Um, that's actually where all this started was uh, these here. Uh, let me hide this guy. Beep. All right. Uh, you see um, basically any any shape you want to make. The only important thing is that it's um, like really uh, separate, like um, a really dark color, a really bright color. And I think black and white is the most important for the way the control net model works, but I might be wrong. I haven't played with it enough yet. I do have some textures that are, you know, like animated textures with solid colors. So I, I, I do plan to run those through and see, uh, see what happens. But uh, yeah, for now, really crazy what you can do. Just adding some of the other videos I made today to the pile here. There we go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you could do a threshold on it, like in uh, After Effects or uh, Premiere or whatever. Uh, just get it down to black and white silhouette, and it would totally work. It might not def it might not make a dancer on the screen, but it'll do something in the shape of the dancer. <laughs> it'll do whatever you prompt it, but like in the shape of the dancer. Might not necessarily be a human form, though, depending on what it sees. All right, this one's almost finished. Let's pull it up and see what it looks like. Oh, well, that's trippy. Hey, Anomaly. Well, that's freaking crazy. All right, let's... Uh, uh... Kill you, bring you back, add you to the pile. There we go. And then let's shuffle these. Why not? All right, cool. Uh, let's try another one. Uh, that one came out a little silly with the text and stuff. So let's actually remove everything but the portal to another dimension and see what it makes of that. Oh, I just realized you couldn't see the prompt. I'll get the hang of this one day. Staying very eyeball. Let's see what happens. No. <laughs> no. Um I wish. I think the uh I think the uh the best you can do is l do more loops than you need. Try to find uh you know a seamless ish seamless seamless ish uh looping point and then, then cross fade them. I mean, it's gross and, and, and manual. He wants to do manual labor, but I think that's, um, I think that's the move. Um, I wonder if you loop back to the same seed, though. It's the same input. It might be onto something. You like how I was like, there's no way in hell that'll work, and then I was like, actually, maybe. 
So 140 frames. We want to get back to the seed. We want we want it to roam for 139 frames, but we want that 140th seed to be the same. No, we don't. Well, maybe we do. Would that get it back into the same realm? Or is there too many extenuating circumstances to make it the same frame? Yeah, there's one way to find out, isn't there? Let's try some seed scheduling and see if we can make a perfect loop. I have a feeling we won't be able to, but I don't think it'll be your idea's fault. I think it'll be my inability to pull it off, but let's try it. I'll just jump back over to Blender. While we're waiting, we can make another uh, input. Uh, this has just been running the whole time. Oh, no, that's my... That. All right. Uh, layout. Let's plug our wave texture into something math mathfully. Instead of add, let's do divide because I'm feeling saucy. Uh, I'll stick to the stick to the vanilla stuff. Just plug stuff in and try stuff. Don't worry about whether it's the right node or the wrong node. If it looks cool, it's the right node. That's kind of cool. What if we would change our ring to a ooh ooh? Yeah, just change stuff. You're not gonna kill anything. If you do, that might be cool. But you can see, you can play with this color ramp value to like make it, you know, more or less of the texture. This is pretty cool, actually. I think this is gonna make something crazy. All right, let's 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 render this texture. Call this uh, saw blades, like saw blade. You render, and we'll go back to the forum. This is the one night, well, one of the nice things about having a 3090 is I can do Blender and Deform at the same time without my computer exploding. All right, let's go. Ooh, let's check out that video it made. Uh, back to Deform. I'm going to get really fast with this stuff one day. You, 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 you. Add file. All right, here's the video we just made. Oh, no. Pew. That is cool. I wonder if you went sequentially seed wise, went like seed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then randomized all your stuff, and then you get to the twelfth frame from the end and go uh, twelve, eleven, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. If it would like give you a twenty-four frame transition that would like bring the seeds back to convergence. Would that be any different than just having random seeds? I don't know. But I think that might be the thing to check out. So let's um, hide this. And we can keyframe our seeds here. So we want to schedule them. Mm, crap. I forgot I'm dumb. What's S? Uh, how does seed scheduling work in dip form? It was a way to see travel scripts. Hello, pancakes. In the dev commits. Do you know how to do seed scheduling, Tenzia? <clears throat> yeah, I just um, I'm too dumb. <laughs> uh, what would the uh, what what would the the thing be for that? That's the expression. I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, I don't want to get into parsec for this. But basically, we were just going to try to go like seed 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 for the first 12 frames and then do the rest of the animation with random seeds. And then when you get to that 12th last frame of the animation, go 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 to see that if it would like do anything. Yeah, I, I just don't think it'll work because I have a feeling incremental seeds are relatively the same distance as a random seed in the way the dimensional space works. So I, I'm not, and I don't even know if I would be doing it right here. Although I guess I could go, I could just do it manually. So one, one would be two, <laughs> uh, two would be three. Uh, holy crap. It's going to be hard on my brain. And three, four. Four, five, five, six, uh, six, seven, seven, eight, 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 eight nine, ten, <laughs> and eleven, eleven, twelve. Okay, so we've got the first eleven frames. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I should use ChatGPT. And then 
is zero is zero random? I think zero is random. And then one forty minus twelve is one twenty eight. So at one twenty eight we'll go C twelve. One twenty nine would go C eleven. Maybe ten. Thirty one. Nine. This is so dumb. Now negative one is random. Okay. Nine one thirty two. I feel like this is gonna do nothing, but it's a really good way to waste time. Uh. 7, 34 would be 6, 35 is 36 is 4, I'm sure this is possible with an expression, but whatever, 38, 2, hell yeah, okay, so that should go, and then, and then it should go, the technical terms, uh, YOLO, oh yeah, ladder, alright, I'll have to play with that after. All right, uh, we got 140 frames. We're doing this whole thing. I think that's right. We'll stay on. I don't know. I have to shift these all by one, but we'll see. Okay, let's try a prompt uh, that we know what it looks like. So let's do um, in Ontario at sunset, pine trees, rocky shores, uh, windy, uh, crisp uh, autumn, 35 millimeter lens photography. Let's try a Fuji film. Make it all awesome looking. All right. We'll know this works if it doesn't crash, first of all. And we'll know it works if uh, this changes. The strength is high, too. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Okay. Okay. I broke something real good. Let's have a look at those keyframes. Zero. Is it like a keyframe validator, I wonder? So we got to 12. Maybe negative one isn't random maybe s was random <laughs> i kind of like what this is doing though <laughs> so i just went to that thing and just went to that seed and just stayed there it's like christmas craft art or something i'm letting it run i don't care this looks crazy embrace the glitches uh, i can validate this while this runs uh zero one one and two two colon three three colon four four colon that looks right. So I think it's probably this. Maybe it's zero. Uh, let's go with seed schedule. Uh, seed schedule syntax. Can I see the oh. math is hard? Oh yeah, you guys can't even see that. That's weird. <sighs> I wonder if it's zero. So if it goes right back, how does ladder work? <laughs> Should be hitting the last few frames soon. Are we on frame 120? We should be... It should kick back into motion in three frames, two frames. One, this one should have a new seed. Interesting. And now the seeds should be changing again. Okay. I might try that though. Hmm. One sec. Uh, deform seed keyframing. Uh, zero zero. Oh, I think it's zero. I think negative one is for the other schedules. You know, I can tell after thirteen frames if I'm. Sent you a new run of the workflow. Oh, it looks great. It's like bananas and melons and pancakes and, and Venus flytraps. Oh, okay. We're losing it again. I wonder why. Okay, so I guess the schedule doesn't work exactly how I wanted it to. I think what I need to do is add some math code there. One sec. Negative, negative one times costs. I'm just going to try this. Try this crazy code here. Uh, this probably won't work either. But uh, YOLO. <laughs> Do something after 12 frames. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I added this code here. See what happens. I think it's working. Uh, what do you say? I'm on frame 13. Oh, it's getting sparkly. Yeah, no, we're losing it. Yeah, I think I just misunderstand the seed scheduling system. That's fine. Let's go back to iterative. 
<laughs> doesn't say how the ladder would work. I wonder if I could just do... Where's the other window? See, let's try this. No. <laughs> okay, it did exactly what I asked it to. Good lord, <sighs> that is funny. That is really funny. So it made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then twelve. It put a random number between one and one thousand, and it did that for every single value. Uh, I mean, this is literally what I asked it to do, so I deserve that, I suppose. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, randomly generated numbers between one and one thousand. I'd like you to randomly generate the numbers. Oh my god! Okay, you're adding the string random between 1 and 1000 <laughs> in each keyframe. Can you please just place an actual number between 1 and 1000? There we go! God, that's funny. Oh my god. It's so smart and so dumb at the same time. I love it. Okay. I think this should do at least what we wanted it to do. Let's try that. Look at that horrible text. Oh, value, value explosion. Oh, I think we did it. We have frame 13 yet. Are things sparkling? 14, 15, 17, no sparkles. Okay, this one's for all the marbles. Persevering. Uh, banned. I really like this forcing geometry on nature thing. So what are we betting? Loop or no loop? The input values are slightly different, so they won't be the same images. Um, but hopefully they'll pull from the same areas in latent space, so who's to say? Oh yeah, we have to make our crazy saw blades animation. Maybe I'll do like uh, uh, deforestation or like uh, timber and cutting down trees and stuff like that. See what happens. Yeah, the black and white ones came out so cool. I think they'd be really cool to do with like Giant's Causeway too with those like hexagonal stones and like the green lush... Render, 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 render. This is going to be a lot better in the winter when my house is cold. <laughs> Drone footage of ancient uh, Stonehenge. Almost done. Will it loop? Bow, 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 bow. Let's find out. Add file. That doesn't look like the first frame, but let's find out. No. I wonder why, though. Same prompts, same seeds. Guess it's just not the same input images, so, you know, this is what it is. I do hope somebody gets us there. It might be possible to do with, um, like, init images, like guided diffusion. You know, just render that first image and then get back to it. Um, Matisse built some stuff into the forum that, that does something like that, but... Unfortunately, the method of getting back to the image sort of looks like uh, shuffling through a deck of cards of images to get there. But uh, maybe we can find a way to style gain ourselves into that back into that position or something. It'd be really really cool. Okay, uh, but -ba 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 -ba. go away seed schedule. Let's go back to an iterative, and let's try the other video, which is where did I put it? Videos. Ba, 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 saw blades, saw blades. What did I call it? Did I not make the video? Oh, I didn't. I didn't make the video yet. 
One sec, I'll just drag it into Resolve real quick. Mm -mm. Saw blades. And you're in videos. Saw blades. Uh, copy as path. So you go in here and init video here. And then let's go prompts. Deforestation, cutting down trees, chainsaw, blades, uh, forest. Oh, what did I break? Oh, the seed schedule. What's the default value? Uh, I think it's in any of the animations I've already made. Seed. I think I have to add this crap. Uh, Keyframes, schedule. I think it still has to have that there. Oh well, no, that's not right. What did I break? What did I break? What did I break? Do I want an iterative? Maybe I just want a random. Ah, shoot. Unexpected character after line. Uh okay. Um let me grab my prompt and I'll just kill this and bring it back. And we'll rebuild the environment real quick. I'm gonna restart uh, automatic eleven eleven. <sighs> it's loading up. This will give us an opportunity to show you what all the settings are. We'll just go panel by panel. Keyframes, we'll leave it in 2D mode, cadence of 1, maximum frames 140, that's the length of our animation. Strength schedule, we will set to 8. We'll turn it down if it's too burned and exposed. We'll change the zoom to static 1, leave transform center at 0.5, leave everything else at 0. Uh, we can actually leave all this stuff alone. You can get into that later if you want. Um, no need. Uh, config, the CFG is fine. Clip skips off by default. Uh, seed, just curious. Ah, uh, it was the escapes, the, uh, the slashes from the text file. Yeah, I, I thought that's what it was, but I didn't know how to get it back to, uh, back to its place. All right, so let's iterative seed there, blah, blah, blah. Strength, if you're good. Okay, prompts. Let's paste our prompt back in. Uh, init, video init. And let's grab our video. We're not actually doing video init, but we are using it as the hybrid video init. Uh, and we're going to go here and change the strength to zero to make sure that it's not black and white. Enable control net. No preprocessor. The model is QR code monster. Wait schedule of 0 0.8. Starting schedule, blah, 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 that's all fine. Path goes here. Balance is fine. That's all fine. Let's add pixel perfect. Uh, let's go after generation. Generate input frames. We don't use the first frame as the init image. Uh, let's do optical flow. Far and back. Uh, let's do video depth. Uh, let's leave the comp mask off. And change this to zero. One, let's try that. I think that's all the settings. Change the output video to 24 frames per second so it doesn't look like a flickery mess when it's done. Blah, blah, blah. It's all good. Run. Everything's fine. Yeah, that's the run. The alternative to that is just loading up an old um, an old file from one of your last animations. It's so small. Preview's so small. Why? Oh, geez. I didn't realize my thing was covering up all the work I was just showing you how to do. I'll get good at this one day, I promise. I think I need three more monitors. Just went through all the settings with them covered like a champ. Well, this is too small to see, so let's go through them again. <laughs> uh, Euler A, uh, 25 steps just for now. 512 by 512, easy peasy. Keyframes, 2D mode, maximum frames, same amount as your input video. Uh, this actually, I don't think it matters. Uh, I think it when you use hybrid video, it'll just be the length of your video. Um, strength, I'm using 0.8. Uh, we'll see if that's too much or too little. Uh, zoom, I changed from the crazy value they give you to just one. That makes it camera stay still. We don't want the camera to move. We're doing the motion with the uh, input stuff. You can leave the rest of that stuff alone. You can leave the rest of that stuff alone. Prompts, drop your prompt in the thingamajing dong here. Init, strength zero, no init. Uh, strength at zero. Video in it, drop your video file in there, your video texture. Ba, 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 ba. Yep. Uh, control net, add a uh, enable control net, pixel perfect mode, no preprocessor, QR code monster as the model. 
uh, wait schedule of 0.8, paste in the path to your video. In hybrid video mode, you want after generation, generate input frames, don't use the first frame as the input image, optical flow, far and back, video depth, uh, no comp mask, and turn your comp alpha to zero. That way it won't try to embed the frame over top of the frame you're working on. That works better when you're like doing like a human or somebody dancing or something where you want like the original video to come through. But because we're using the video just to drive the movement of the diffusion itself, we don't actually want the color of the video in there. So that's why we've got this down to zero and the init strength at zero. Otherwise, the initial video, which is black and white, will take over and your animations will be black and white, which is totally a look if you want that. You can, you can use that to control, the, you know, if you want to render one that's the colors that you want your animation to be and render a black and white one for control net, you can actually point to each one as two separate videos. As long as they're the same length and the same stuff happens, it'll use one for motion and one for control net diffusion masking. So many possibilities. Okay, let's see. 90%. This one looks a little unhinged, but we'll see. Wow. That motion is really cool. All right. Let's try a house of mirrors. I'll walk around a bit and stretch my legs while this one renders. Feel free to take a break and chill out. Grab yourself a drink. I shall return. All right, what do we got? <clears throat> we got some spray paint on concrete skyscraper stuff. We got some other skyscrapers coming in. All oh, this one looks like blurry as hell, so I'm not sure what I would at. I mean, certain prompts are just blurry, I don't know. All right, let's have a... I'm trying to think of the best way to just like have like a gallery going of all the ones I've made other than just having to constantly... Because they're all in separate subfolders. It's super annoying to go in and add them every time I make one but whatever let's do it uh that one and then where were we that's a one I think yeah. I need to learn how to make watch folders a thing in my life I'm just gonna move this down a bit so we can still see 
<laughs> Settings. I think... Let's make a new texture. We're back in Blender. This one's cool. I'm going to save this one. Normally save my texture. Go away, magic texture. Try a Vornoi. But instead of a 3D one... No, 3D's fine. That's pretty damn cool. Yeah. All right. Let's do this. You're all fine. That's a little more organic. Feels less like a hard triangle's cool though. Four, but screw it. Hard. That might actually be pretty freaking sick. We gotta try it, right? Screw it. I have a feeling this is just going to be weird. I have no idea what it's going to do with all this black space. Like, this is weird. This is going to be a weird one. I'm going to save myself a second here and... <clears throat> or Lee Lossless. Also as a... Just realized you guys... Save myself the render step. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. We didn't see what our skyscrapers look like. Back over to the forum. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, my audio's going in and out. That sucks. Maybe I need to get up on the mic more. Is that better? Uh, video source. VLC. Yep. Remove. Yep. A file. There we go. Here's the skyscrapers. That's cool. Got really blurry, though. Don't know why prompt was too unspecific maybe all right let's try this is the one i just made temp sparkles dot thingy all right cool copy path control net paste path <clears throat> init video init paste path well let's get our sparkle on okay let's try um beautiful night sky littered with stars uh evening a campfire um smoke and marshmallows oh. this is amazing what is it doing right now it's so coherent <coughs> uh I, I gotta figure out how to djv can I bring this up as a external window? Yeah. All right, cool. And then I can just load AISD images to forum. Oh, of course. Open with DJV. Okay. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> this kid just appears. Oh, it's great. That's really cool. It's so weirdly coherent. Okay. I'll try something that isn't this. Uh, space battle over Jupiter. Ships, energy weapons, sci-fi, 70s, book cover. It's interesting how stationary but movementy it is. <laughs> the seat's getting pretty busy. I wonder if you just let this one loop over and over again how insane the battle would get. Nothing but just bugs everywhere. Again, this is all 512 by 512. If you start cranking this stuff up, it starts looking a lot better. Just kind of exploring ideas right now. Uh, 
That's pretty cool. I like the way it sort of organically grows up. <clears throat> Let's go back over to Blender and try a different texture. Let's add another wave. We're going to do two waves. Ooh, that's interesting. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's interesting. Ooh, that hard line's gonna be cool. Okay, but there's too many triangles. Okay. I think that's the one right there. Okay, that, that one's gonna be cool. All this uh, geometry. Videos folder. Uh, v -v -v -v. What did I call it? <clears throat> oh yeah. Geometry, there you are. The path. Back to the forum. Okay. <clears throat> we're in the forum. <clears throat> Pardon me, sorry. Alright, we're gonna get this here and then we're gonna get you you. Okay, and we're gonna try. <laughs> this is cool already. I wonder what I did. I wonder if I did something weird. Zero one. This does seem blurrier than it used to be. I wonder if I screwed something up. Pixel, you're all good. It's fine. The zoom is static at one. I didn't change any of this. The seed, still editor. Seven, two. Eh, just let it run. <laughs> this is wild. Let's see how it looks. Not you. <laughs> oh, I just closed the app. Oh, render's going faster. Maybe it's better with that off then. Oh. Wonder what's causing all that stuff on the sides now. What's the animation doing? That's cool. This is cool. Okay, let's check out the one we just made. <laughs> this stuff. Oh, the way those stairs go up at the end there. Okay. All right, I think I need to extend this animation a couple times and just let it run. That is cool. I like the little art it makes for the walls. I wonder why. I wonder why the sides wigged out like that, and I wonder if it's going to happen again. What is it about that input pattern that made the sides wiggle? You see, it just makes all this crazy stuff on the sides at some point in the animation. I wonder if it's just the way those lines, the intersecting lines, the way to, to, to control that model sort of interprets that, just makes it go haywire. But it's it's pretty cool. It just forces them to merge. Man, that's trippy. The way that room just pulls towards you like that. Yeah, that is trippy. <laughs> okay, let's go look at that animation. Maybe we can figure out why. You set of divide is a similar problem here where the I think it's when a white area like this gets trapped and when it gets trapped and and made to be smaller and smaller and smaller, which is like a super hard thing to avoid. I think that should be ideal. Yep. Call it bulge. Forum. Inside you and I'll try the same prompt actually. 
hybrid video will be videos. Uh, no, temp bulge, copy path, uh, init, video init, and hybrid, no, control net, oop, oop, same prompt. Who needs acid? Just a few stuff. Oh man, stable diffusion. No outputs. Boing, boing. I think after this one, I'm going to call it a day, but uh, if you need to know how to do this or you missed anything, uh, this will be up. You can just start it from the beginning and we, you can, I go through the whole process of creating a texture and how to use it in control net uh, with uh, the forum and hybrid video to make these animations. So if you make some stuff and uh, you know, I want to see it. So uh, link me on Twitter, tag me, uh, Send me a DM, pop on the Discord, say hello. I want to see what you make with this stuff. I'll play the animation and then I'll sign off. This one's pretty cool. So yeah, just mixing two textures together in Blender and, and generating a animated texture and then using that as input. Or you could take any video clip and uh, run a threshold on it in uh, Premiere or Resolve or After Effects and... Uh, Get the silhouette and use that as your control net input. As long as you're not expecting what we went in to come out, you pretty you should be pretty happy. All right, let's check out this animation. Uh, up, up. There it is. And scooch. That's really trippy. I'm going to have to make a reel of stuff that we did today and post it on YouTube tonight. Well, thanks for everybody who came and hang out and everybody who wanted to learn and as i said if you missed it you just got here sorry but i uh, you can just go back and watch the whole thing from the beginning i get the whole process i think done within about explaining how it works within about 20 30 minutes with a little blender tutorial so um yeah have fun and uh enjoy this is a really fun process and hit me up on twitter i'd like to talk to you bye bye